African tribal markings and their meanings. Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sephora Moses and I welcome you to Ink and Tales. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to have you around. Today we are going to explore African tribal markings and their meanings. African tribal marks are scarifications with specific patterns drawn on the faces of individuals for the purpose of identification, protection, and beautification. The custom is an ancient African culture and are usually inscribed on the body by burning or cutting of the skin. In the olden days, when a child is born, the proud father will want the child to be given tribal marks as a way of expressing that he is the legitimate father of the child as well as a way of identifying the child in their family lineage or ethnic group. It is believed that the best way of identifying people of same ethnic group is the similarity of their mask and in that case they protect their interest. The African tribal masks or tattoo have been around for a very long time. Proof of the very first African tattoo was found on a mummy in the year 1994. Tribal mark, which can also be described as facial mark, though where dominated in Africa, can be traced to some foreigners who were living in Egypt in the 5th century BC. During that time, a Greek historian, Herodotus, wrote about some foreigners living in Egypt who cut their foreheads with knives to differentiate themselves from the Egyptians. This practice was further adopted years later when several kings of various kingdoms in Africa started invading other kings and their people for land and other resources. The invaders therefore marked themselves as well as their family members to differentiate themselves from the captured kings and their family members whom they now regard as their slaves. 2. For religious and spiritual protection purposes Some tribal marks are drawn to provide the carrier with protection against all sorts of spiritual attacks throughout their life. Though markings are done on the face mostly for the purpose of ethnic identification, not all marks on the face are for the purpose of identifying an individual as belonging to a particular ethnic group. There are other reasons for facial markings. Some are associated with spiritual or religious practices. In some Yoruba settings, children born as stillbirth or a reincarnated child, which is believed to have been born twice or thrice, are given marks on their face and body for several reasons. It is believed that to take away the spiritual powers of the child, he has to be identified by the mark when he or she is given birth to again and to stop the death of the child at a tender age. It can also be used to wade away evil spirits ravaging around a certain group of people or family. In this case, the mark and not only on the face, but other parts of the body as well. Apart from spiritual and religious purposes, facial marks are given to certain people 
for the treatment of illness, especially children. In this case, traditional healers do incisions on the children's face or body to treat them for ailments. 3. It was once used to data slavers. In the olden days, huge and unpleasant tribal marks were deliberately drawn on the faces of kids by their parents. Not because they hate them or anything, but because they did not want them to be kidnapped or sold into slavery. Apparently, some slavers then saw people with tribal marks on their faces as damaged goods. 4. It is used for identification. It is believed that the use of tribal marks on the continent increased during the period of the Atlantic slave trade, tribe members being chipped off a slave to foreign countries were marked to identify them should they ever be rescued or freed. It also served as a permanent signature linking one to their heritage, as people in the same tribe tend to have the same tribal markings on their faces. There are marks on the cheeks forehead, on the temple, under the chin, and so on. They are both vertical and horizontal lines, slanted lines on both cheeks. These marks are in patterns based on the ethnic group of their bearers and have different meanings and different names. For example, the Yoruba facial marks and their meanings could be traced back to a city king named Shango or Sango, who sent two slaves to a distant country on an important mission. In due course, they returned, and he found that one slave had achieved successfully what he had been sent to do why the other had accomplished nothing. The king therefore rewarded the first with high honors and commanded the second to receive a hundred and twenty-two razor cords all over his body. This was a severe punishment, but when the scars healed, they gave to the slave a very remarkable appearance which greatly took the fancy of the king's wives. Shango therefore decided that courts should in future be given not as punishment but as a sign of royalty and he placed himself at once in the hands of the markers. However, he could only bear to take two courts and so, from that day, two cords on the arm have been the sign of royalty, and various other cords came to be the marks of different tribes. 5. For aesthetic and beautification purposes Some people belong to a certain tribes that don't encourage tribal marks but admire certain patterns. Thus, these can decide to have their faces marked and in this case, it is for beautification and not identification. Tribal marks are mostly given to people at a very young age, most especially when they are babies. This is because at that age, the child doesn't have a say on decisions to giving him or her tribal marks. The people who make these marks use either razor blades or sharp knives to cut the face and they have native dye, pigmentation or black paste, 
usually from grounded shako dust, which is put into the open wound to stain the marks, stop the bleeding and to make the wound heal fast. It is the black paste applied to the wound that makes the mark permanent and never fade away growing alongside the bearer. 6. It is used as a rite of passage. There are many forms in which different cultures display the rites of passage from childhood to adulthood. Some tribes use circumcision, while some tribes use tribal marks as their rites of passage. The pain of having a tattoo done on your body was used to check the perseverance level of individuals. Girls who could not persevere the tattooing process were bound to a life of being single, as she would possibly not be able to go through childbirth, a pain that is far much greater. While the men who could not go through with it are labeled cowards and not allowed to go hunting with the rest of the men. 7. Attraction Back in the olden days, many tribes used tribal marks as a form of makeup to attract the opposite sex. There were different designs drawn on different parts of the body, and as odd as it may sound, this worked for the ladies back then. 8. How African tribal marks are made. Each ethnic group in Africa have their own different inscription patterns, which are pairs in different sizes and shapes at different locations within the face or body. The location and position of the mass inscription depends on the tribe and culture. The tribal marks could be inscribed on the breast, arm, lap, or buktas, but they are usually on the face. A typical tribal mark is done by first cutting the pattern on the desired body part, after which native dye made from charcoal are applied directly on the wound to stop it from bleeding and also to prevent the skin from closing up as the body tries to heal itself. The result is a scar that is permanent. Today, the custom of tribal marking is becoming less common due to the increase in the cases of blood-related infections. Also, the use of tribal marks as a means of identification and beautification no longer in known. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next one.